I can call the Tuesday, April 21st, 2020, Papillion City Council meeting to order. Ms. Brown, would you please take the roll? Sunday? Here. Mungard? Here. Gaines? Here. Glover? Here. Jaworski? Here. Kluke? Here. Stubby? Here. Ingberg? Here. Time for the Pledge of Allegiance. At least those in the council chambers will stand and do the pledge. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Do we have an affidavit of publication on file? We do. And a current copy of the Open Meetings Act is posted on the city council, in the council chambers and online at www.papillion.org. Um, again, this is the second Zoom meeting we've had of council. We had a good dry run last time. We actually, at the last city council meeting, had about 56 participants, and I think everybody was able to participate that wanted to. Um, if this is the first time uh, with you joining us, whether as an applicant or just the public, um, you'll notice it's not totally consistent, but we're trying to, you'll notice some of the backgrounds are white with a city logo. Uh, those are city uh, staff and department heads and their title and name should be on there so you know who, who is attending. And um, the blue background with the uh, city logo are the city council officials. And all city council are on Zoom, uh, with the exception of Mr. Glover, who is in the council chambers with myself and the city clerk and the city attorney. Um, we have everybody muted for the most part when they came in. That's to control the background noise. Um, we will be allowing for full public participation, so we'll unmute at the appropriate times. Um, if you are an applicant with a presentation, you are asked to send your presentation in before noon today uh, so we can have that um, to show. Uh, the reason we're doing that is there have been examples of Zoom, uh, public Zoom meetings that have been hijacked and inappropriate things coming up on the screen. So we have screen sharing turned off. Um, so thank you for uh, getting your presentations in and uh, thank you for your patience as we bring that up. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and then just for council, again, like last time, I think it worked pretty smooth that if you make a motion or a second that you state who it is. Um, since you can't always see who's, who's maybe talking. So if you could announce those for the record, that would be appreciated. Um, with that, Ms. Myers, uh, administrator's report, please. Thank you, Mayor Black. It's hard to believe, um, but it's budget time again. It seems as though we just completed that. Um, but department heads are already working on their 2020-21 budget revenues. I think those have already come in to Nancy. Um, we're going to be getting out the expenditure parameters in the next couple of weeks, so they will be working on those as well. We're asking the department heads just to go ahead and prepare their budget normally, and then based on us getting some results relative to the impact of revenues on COVID-19, which at least from a sales tax percep perception, we don't expect to have any information until June. But um, so anyway, you will be receiving some um, preliminary budget information in July. Um, also, just, just a quick update relative to revenues expenditures this year directly related to COVID-19. All department heads are currently looking at their budgets um, and any expenditures that we can reduce or hold off on, we are until we have a better idea of what impact, if any, there is on our projected revenues. Um, now on to some good news. Um, the softball complex is moving forward as planned. Um, if you drove by, you may have noticed a lot of activity. Footings for the concession stand, dugouts, spectator seating, and, and backstops are in. Field lighting has been installed as well, and they're planning to start on the concession stand masonry next week, so that's good news. I understand that Fricky Field is also moving forward, so our projects are continuing. Um, also, I'm sure all of you know, but if you don't, um, Assistant City Administrator Amber Powers had her baby. She had a baby girl on Saturday, April 4th, home or Mary Lee, and both are doing fine. I think she's, I thought she might be anxious to get to work, but I think she's enjoying motherhood too well. So let's hope we see her back. Um, again, we're all working on COVID-19 and reacting, reacting as new health directives uh, come out. 
we'll be looking forward to what Governor Ricketts will be providing us in the next couple of weeks, and then we will uh, respond accordingly. So that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you very much. Do we have a motion to approve the consent agenda? Motion, Councilman Klug. Motion Councilman Klug. Councilman Gaines, second. Second by Gaines. Do we have any proponents? Do we have any opponents? Any council discussion? Please vote. Sunday. Aye. Mumgard. Aye. Gaines. Aye. Glover. Aye. Jaworski. Yes. Luke. Yes. Stuby. Yes. Engberg. Yes. Eight yeas, zero nays. Motion passes. Item D1, Ordinance 1878, an ordinance to amend Article 23 PUD Planned Unit Development Overlay District of Chapter 205 of the Papillion Zoning Ordinance. The applicant is the City of Papillion. PUD Planned Unit Development Overlay District Regulations Ordinance Amendment. Is there a councilman who will introduce? Ingberg will introduce. Introduced by Ingberg. Thank you. D2, Ordinance 1880, an ordinance to approve a change of zone from AG Agricultural to CC Community Commercial and R4 Multifamily Residential for the property legally described as attractive land located in part of the northeast quarter of the northwest quarter and part of the northwest quarter of the northwest quarter located in section one township 13 north range 12 east of the 6 p.m sarpy county nebraska generally located southeast of 72nd street and shram road the applicant is papio park llc so councilman will introduce councilman gaines i'll introduce introduced by councilman gaines thank you e1 ordinance 1877 an ordinance to approve a change of zone from limited industrial LI to mixed use MU for the property legally described as lots one, two, and four, Prairie Corners five, Replat two, formerly known as part of lots three and four, Prairie Corners five, lot five, Prairie Corners five, and lots one and two, Prairie Corners five, Replat one, lots six, seven, and eight, and nine, Prairie Corners two, generally located east of the intersection of Highway 50 and Cornhusker Road, the applicants are Love's Travel Stops and Country Stores, Inc., Mighty Properties, LLC, and Warner Enterprises. Is there, this is a public hearing. I'll open it. Do we have any proponents? And if you'd state your name for the record, and we'll let the applicant go first if they're on here. Hello, this is Matt Eagle with Shimmer. Address 1044 North 115th Street, Omaha, Nebraska. Go ahead, Matt. Um, I, had, uh, I sent in a short PDF to present, if we can pull that up. Hold on one second. Should be up. Great, thank you. And uh, this is my first Zoom meeting uh, for a city council meeting, so I apologize if I'm a little clunky at this. It's uh, only but our second the, uh, one, so we'll apologize too. <laughs> Uh, what, what you see there is the general area of the mixed use development. Um, uh, generally, the area south of Interstate 80 and east of Highway 50 it is currently zoned LI. Uh, the intent of the mixed use development is to create a congruent uh, neighborhood that really is uh, centered around the logistics and trucking industry. Um, the land is uh, there's Land owned by Werner along the west side of Cornhusker Road. Truck Center Company is already there, a uh, company who is a sales and service of uh, a lot of trucks and uh, has a on site truck driver school and truck, or not truck driver school, truck mechanic school. And then Loves is also one of the applicants who is planning to develop a uh, tier one truck stop on the uh, large parcel. Uh, immediately southeast of the intersection of 144th Street and Cornhusker Road. Um, if you go to the next page, please. Uh, this is generally the uh, development plan that we've developed for the project. It shows um, the uh, loves to the left-hand side of the, the uh, page, the existing truck center development, as well as some planned um, 
industrial slash commercial type buildings that fall within the uses that we have laid out for this development. Next, please. Uh, these are just some pictures of what we are uh, example types of buildings that'll be included. Um, you see a picture of the existing truck center companies, uh, corporate headquarters there, an example love project. Um, there's also a potential plan for uh, a hospitality, a hotel, uh, a lot of the trucking industry, the truck drivers need a place to stay when they come in. And if, if you have a, if you have a child in the background, could you mute please? Go ahead, Matt. Thank you. Um, so uh, potential for a hotel to be developed within the, within the area. Also some higher end type industrial um, slash commercial type buildings uh, that would fit into the, the high end aesthetic that we're shooting for in this area. Next page, please. Uh, these are just some of the general materials that we would use. Um, nothing groundbreaking here. Next, please. Again, more materials. Next. Uh, this is uh, the permitted uses list that we have developed um, along with the planning department. What we uh, what they found to be acceptable for this location. You'll notice um, some commercial uses, um, a few transportation uses, uh, so some general industrial that fits in with this uh, area of the city. Uh, there are a few notes at the bottom that really limit some of the more commercial type uses that maybe wouldn't normally be located within an industrial area, such as lodging. You can see that uh, that's only allowed on uh, one of the lots. Uh, a restaurant will only be permitted <clears throat> within one of the lots, in addition to the restaurant that will be attached to the uh, Love's store. And then a truck terminal. If that use does come into this area, it would only be permitted on a lot south of Cornhusker Road to keep that lot on one of the lots that's not directly um, visible from Interstate 80. Next, please. And here is the, uh, the proposed sign package. Uh, we're proposing each lot to have its own monument sign. Uh, one, what I would call development sign um, near Cornuska Road and 144th Street to uh, list the tenants within the area. And then one um, project or interstate sign, we're calling it, um, near the interstate that would be mostly used by Loves to uh, advertise uh, fuel prices, as well as, uh, I believe, truck center companies' plans to hopefully include some signage on that as well. And the, uh, just as the last page, I believe, is uh, the, the concept we've put together for that, for that uh, interstate sign. We've gone um, away from a pole sign and more towards a large monument style sign to keep a, a high end aesthetic in the area. Um, we've worked out, you know, a, a decorative base on the bottom. Um, come to an agreement with the planning department regarding uh, area of signage to keep it uh, within the limits um, that they felt would be appropriate. And again, you can see the loves, the fuel price are on there. Um, right now, a Wendy's is proposed to be attached to the love store and then the truck center stein there as well. Um, so it looks like there's one more page. And then along with this development, there'll be some uh, extensive improvements to 144th Street, Highway 50 through here. I will be adding an additional left turn lane at Cornhusker Road, um, inbound and outbound right turn lanes on Cornhusker, and then a right turn lane onto Prairie Corners Road. Um, to the, the traffic there, if you've ever been through there, really at any time of day, but uh, during rush hour, it's 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 bad, and uh, <clears throat> this will help to alleviate some of that as well as to provide access for the the increased uh, truck traffic that this development would would bring in. Um, so that that concludes my presentation. I would be happy to. I guess I believe uh, one of the applicants from Loves is 
on the call. If I'm not sure if they have anything to add or not. We'll, we'll put them up next in queue if they do, if there is an applicant from Loves that wants to speak. Hi, this is Frank Lee. Can you all hear me? Yes, we can. And if you could state okay. your address um, for the record. Uh, 10601 North Pennsylvania, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, 73120. Um, really, Matt, Matt gave a pretty good presentation of what we are um, uh, potentially going to develop uh, in this at this site I would just add that uh, we're extremely excited about this location um, we have been working in tandem with uh, Werner this entire time and and uh, they sold us the property and they also happen to be one of our biggest and best customers um, and so this is kind of a unique situation for us to uh, to partner up in this situation um, with with a customer. But um, I appreciate everything that the city has done to work with us, uh, especially on the signage. And um, we've uh, uh, just a little background on our company. We uh, we're a privately held company uh, by the Love family. Um, Tom Love started the company in 1964, um, and as of as of a couple of months ago, I think actually I think it was October, we opened up our 500th store in uh, the United States. So um, we've been on a, a very aggressive growth pattern for the last 10 years or so. Um, we build 35 to 45 of these locations, these type of locations, a year. Um, uh, we employ 25,000 people across the country, um, and uh, so we are in a in a high growth mode. And uh, with this unfortunate situation in our country right now, um, I can tell you that the trucking industry has never been more important, at least in my lifetime. So um, we're glad that we can stay open, and glad that we have. Uh, frontline employees that are that are keeping keeping America moving as the trucking companies like to say and um, we're excited about this development and it, it fits into our network very well and uh, I can answer any questions about the company you might like to ask um, I started in operations and most of my time has been spent in real estate but I could probably answer a little bit of either type of question so thanks thank for thanks for considering us thank you very much and uh, both for yourself and then for anybody else on the phone. Um, to, tonight is the public hearing and then the next city council meeting will be council discussion and vote on the project. So thank you again. Do we have any other proponents? Anybody want to speak in favor? Hearing none, any opponents? Don't see anybody weighing in. I'll close the public hearing. Thank you very much. Next uh, items F1 through F4. Um, the applicant has requested that those be postponed indefinitely. Uh, it's Ordinance 1829, Resolution R200044, Resolution R200045, and Resolution R200046. Those were originally on the March 17th council meeting, and we did vote to postpone until the 21st, uh, but now the, uh, the applicant would like to do it a little bit longer. So is there a motion to postpone Ordinance 1829, Resolution R200044, Resolution R200046 indefinitely? Motion, Councilman Klug. Motion by Klug. Second, Councilman Gaines. Second by Gaines. Are there any proponents? Any opponents? Any council discussion? Please vote. Sunday. Aye. Mumgard. Yes. Gaines. Yes. Glover. Yes. Jaworski. Yes. Kluke. Yes. Stuby. Yes. Engberg. Yes. Eight yeas, zero nays. Motion passes. But, uh, the next one is related. It's more procedural. We, with that item last time, we did have a public hearing that was published and we continued that public hearing. And since we did that, I still want to call for proponents and opponents. Then we'll take another motion to, uh, to uh, continue it indefinitely. So are there any proponents on resolution R20045? Any opponents? 
Is there a motion to continue resolution R20045 indefinitely? Goes from Engberg. Motion. Motion by Engberg. Second, Second by Councilman Sunday. Second by Sunday. Any proponents? Opponents? Any council discussion? Please vote. Sunday. Aye. Mumgard? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Glover? Yes. Jaworski? Yes. Kluke? Yes. Stubbe? Yes. Hangberg? Yes. Eight yes. yes. zero nays. Motion passes. Next is item F5, Ordinance 1872. An ordinance to approve a change of zone from CC Community Commercial to LC Limited Commercial for the property legally described as Lots 1 and 2 Summerfield 2nd Edition Replat 4, a subdivision generally located northwest of South 72nd Street and Cornhusker Road. The applicant is Point Development Company. Is there a motion to approve ord Ordinance 1872? Motion, motion by Jaworski. Second by Mumgard. Second by Mumgard. Any council discussion? Yeah, I have something to say. But, um, and then just before that, um, I did receive some correspondence from, um, from one individual that is asking for it to potentially be tabled based on um, market demand for the product. And I did send that to everybody. So you should have that. Uh, Mr. Mumgard, go ahead. Hi, uh, yeah, I just, just want to let everybody know that Council Member Jaworski and I met today with uh, a neighborhood representative and the attorney for the SID where this project's gonna be built. And we discussed rebuilding the Summerfield entry sign. You'll remember that that was uh, an issue brought up during the special use permit that the neighbors want that sign rebuilt. Uh, it's broken and it does need to be rebuilt. Uh, it was a very productive meeting. Uh, the SID is very cooperative in uh, accomplishing that and the goal of getting a new sign. Uh, the neighborhood now will create a design of some sort, uh, look into expected cost. Uh, they're gonna utilize the uh, neighborhood grant program to try to get that. The idea that we were throwing out there was that the sign that sits on the side of the intersection, uh, which is now blocked by one of those very beautiful metal utility boxes that the city has no control over um, that will instead move that sign into the median there. Um, the SID then uh, will, the board will look at that and will hopefully um, share the cost along with contributions by the neighborhood and the neighborhood grant program. Um, that cost then will be shared in part by Avamore and the other businesses that are in that SID and will benefit from having that whole corner improved. Um, so the discussion that was brought up during the special use permit about that sign will continue and the neighbors can uh, trust that something will be done hopefully in the near future to repair or replace their neighborhood sign that really does need some help. And so the discussion last week with Avermore about uh, what was needed, uh, that was productive. Uh, we'll let Avermore cooperate and, and participate in that by way of the SID. Thanks. Thank you. Any other council discussion? Seeing none, please vote. Sunday. Aye. Mumgard. Yes. Gaines? Yes. Glover? Yes. Jaworski? Yes. Kluke? Yes. Stubbe? Yes. Engberg? Yes. Eight yeas, zero nays. Motion passes item F6, ordinance 1876. An ordinance to approve a change of zone from R2 single family residential medium density to R4 PUD2 multifamily residential specific planned unit development for the property legally described as Lot 3, Block 33, Beatles Edition, generally located at 524 North Jefferson Street, the applicant of St. Columbia Hill Church. Is there a motion to approve Ordinance 1876? Motion, Klug. Motion by Klug. Second, Stubbe. Second by Stubbe. Any council discussion? Please vote. Sunday. Aye. 
Mumgarden? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Glover? Yes. Jaworski? Yes. Kluke? Yes. Stubby? Yes. Engberg? Yes. Eight is zero days. Motion passes item F7, resolution R20-0059. Resolution to approve the first amendment to the planned unit development PUD agreement for St. Columbic Hill Parish Campus. So motion to approve resolution R20-0059. Motion by Stubbe. Motion by Stubbe. Second by Glover. Second by Glover. Any proponents? Opponents? Any council discussion? Please vote. Sunday. Aye. Mumgard. Yes. Gaines. Yes. Glover. Yes. Jaworski. Yes. Kluke. Yes. Stubbe. Yes. Engberg. Yes. Eight yeas, zero nays. Motion passes. Item F8, resolution R20-0062, a public hearing and a vote. A resolution to approve a Class I liquor license for the City of Papillion doing business as Papillion Landing Event Center, 1046 West Lincoln Street, Papillion, Nebraska, 68046, and a manager application for Doug Huggins. Um, I'll open the public hearing. Um, the applicant's manager is on. I'll note that for the record. Do we have any proponents? Call for opponents. I will note for the record we did receive one email in an opposition. Clerk has that entered, and I believe that was forwarded to council. Um, do we have any other opponents? Doug. Did somebody speak? Okay, I'll close the public hearing. Do we have a motion to approve resolution R20062? Motion by motion Gaines. By motion by Gaines. Second by Jaworski. Second by Jaworski. Uh, any council discussion? Yeah. Mr. Mumgard. Um, with regard to the opposition that was submitted, I guess I have a question for uh, Doug, and the city staff. What is the plan for when, uh, when and how alcohol will be served there? Uh, Mr. It, Huggins? It will be uh, tied directly to events with the Chrysalis Event Center. Um, as we, we mostly for, for rentals, um, and that, that's primarily what we plan to do it now. Um, and that's it. Well, okay. Uh, with respect to that, uh, with the gym there, I know that you have some adult uh, tournaments scheduled there. Um, I don't want to foreclose the possibility of serving alcohol there. I think that'll be a case by case basis in that gym during, during, um, you know, uh, spectator paid, paid spectator type events that occur in there. Right now there isn't, uh, we're, we're leaving our, our options open. This is tied pretty much the whole building is uh, requested for the liquor license. But right now, primarily we're uh, operations, liquor operations will, will happen tied to the Chrysalis Event Center. We've already had a couple of uh, opening receptions with tours that uh, we could have, if we would have had our liquor license, people could have taken beverages and walked around the, the facility just as, um, just to look through, through uh, or to take a tour, but those would be closed uh, rentals or private functions. Okay, well, I, I assume that you'll you'll be using this much like you do the liquor license over at Sumter, that uh, if it's a, activities that are youth oriented or family oriented, there won't be any alcohol. If yes, it's uh, strictly adult, there may be alcohol, correct? Yes, sir. And just like Sumter Amphitheater, we've got a very comprehensive plan on um, IDing and uh, ensuring that we're not serving um, uh, people that, it, that uh, we should not be serving. So it just, just like Sumter Amphitheater, we've got the same safeguards in place. Okay, well, I'll just point out that the, the opponent's point of view is a valid point of view that uh, there's gonna be a whole lot of stuff going on there that's not conducive with having alcohol. 
but I think that the staff has shown that they can they can handle that kind of situation. Thank you. Any other council discussion? Mayor. Yes. Mr. Yeah, Scooby. So, yes. Just a couple other questions, just just for the public's information. So, Doug, when when we would have something, all staff, it would be city staff that would be responsible for serving. And then also, if there is a function, what requirement do we have relative to security? Uh, it's uh, when we do liquor, uh, when we do liquor operations, we will have security either um, part of our staff running or doing security, or for larger events, we will be bringing in the same security company that we use for company or for security as Sumter Amphitheater. Um, since this is uh, liquor operations is fairly controlled. Uh, exits are tightly controlled. We don't need to have as many as we have on for large concerts, such as Sumter uh, Amphitheater. I'm sorry, what was the first part of your question? Uh, relative to, uh, I assume it's all city staff that we have that actually is serving, selling the alcohol. Yes, sir. And we'll do, again, just, just like we do in our other venues, we will train. They will all be trained with safe serve uh, liquor handling and they will re they will report directly to our Sumter managers. Thank you. Any other council discussion? Seeing none, is there a motion to approve resolution R20062? Stubbe will make a motion. Motion by Stubbe. Second by Mumgard. We already have a motion and a second. I was back on the public hearing. Okay. We already we were on council discussion. Please vote. Sunday. No. Mumgard. Yes. Gaines. Yes. Glover. Yes. Jaworski. Yes. Fluke. Yes. Stuby. Yes. Engberg. Yes. Seven yeas, one nay by Sunday. Motion passes. Item F9, Ordinance 1856. An ordinance to approve a change of zone from AG agricultural to R4 multifamily residential for the property legally described as a tract of land being part of tax lot four, a tax lot located in the northwest quarter of section five, township 13 north, range 12 east of the 6 p.m., Sharpie County, Nebraska, generally located on the southwest corner of south 114th Street and Schram Road. The applicant is Felker Family Farms, Belterra. Is there a motion to approve ordinance 1856? Motion by Klug. Second motion. by Jaworski. Second by Jaworski. Uh, staff is requesting a motion to amend Ordinance 1856, and it's just to revise the subdivision name from Ashbury Heights to Belterra, and then to add an explanation of the naming history and to correct the number of lots depicted on the preliminary plat to be 322. Is there a motion to amend Ordinance 1856? Jim, I'll make a motion, motion. to amend. Motion by Councilman Gaines. Second by Ingberg. Second by Ingberg. Do we have any proponents? Any opponents? Any council discussion on the motion to amend? Please vote on the motion to amend. Sunday. Aye. Mumgard? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Glover? Yes. Jaworski? Yes. Kluke? Yes. Stubbe? Yes. Ingberg? Yes. A zero nays. Motion passes. Um, is there any council discussion on the motion as amended? Please vote on the motion as amended. Sunday? Aye. Mumgard? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Glover? Yes. Jaworski? Yes. Luke? Yes. Stubbe? Yes. Engberg? Yes. Eight yeas, zero nays. Motion passes. Item F10, resolution R20-0072. A resolution to approve a final plat for the property legally described as attractive land being in part of the northwest quarter of Section 5, Township 13, North Range 12 East of the 6 p.m. Sarpy County, Nebraska, generally located on the southwest corner of South 114th Street and Shram Road. The applicant is Fucker Family Farms, Belterra. So motion to approve resolution R20-0072. Motion by Jaworski. Motion by Jaworski. Second by Klug. Second by Glover. Uh, are there any proponents? 
Any opponents? Council discussion. Please vote. Sunday. Aye. Mumgard. Yes. Gaines. Yes. Glover. Yes. Jaworski. Yes. Luke. Yes. Duby. Yes. Engberg. Yes. Eight yes. yes. zero nays. Motion passes. Related item F eleven resolution R twenty zero zero seven three. This is a public hearing and a vote, a resolution to approve the Belterra subdivision agreement. It is a public hearing. I'll open that. Do we have any proponents? I'll always let the applicant go first if they're on. They're on. Can you hear us? Yes, go ahead. Uh, well, so we're, we're here for any questions, um, unless you'd like us to go further into the project, but you're on to the subdivision agreement. So we're here for questions. And, and we have Jason Thielen and Kyle Bull of ENA Consulting, consulting engineers on this particular project. I'm Larry Jobin, 11440 West Center Road, appearing on behalf of the applicant. We also have Gene Graves, who is uh, here on behalf of the applicant as well. So we're here for questions. Thank you very much. Do we have any other proponents? Do we have any opponents? Close the public hearing. Do we have a motion to approve resolution R20073? Motion by Gaines. Motion Second. by Gaines. Second by, was that Ingbird? Yes. Thank you. Um, any council discussion? Please vote. Sunday. Aye. Mungard. Yes. Gaines. Yes. Glover. Yes. Jaworski. Yes. Luke. Yes. Duby. Yes. Ingberg. Yes. Eight yeas, zero nays. Motion passes. Item F12, resolution R20074, a resolution to approve the sewer and water connection agreement for SID number 344, Belterra. Is there a motion to approve resolution R20074? Motion by Klug. Motion by Klug. Second by Sunday. Second by Sunday. Do we have any proponents? I'll note for the record that the applicant's still on and we'll just carry the comments over from the other, unless I get anything else. Any opponents? Any council discussion? Please vote. Sunday. Aye. Mumgard. Yes. Gaines. Yes. Glover. Yes. Jaworski. Yes. Luke. Yes. Stuby. Yes. Engberg. Yes. Eight yeas, zero nays. Motion passes. Item F13, resolution R20-0075, a public hearing and a vote. A resolution to approve a Class C liquor license for EB Shadow Lake LLC oh, doing five, business as okay. Early Bird. 7775 mm. Olson Drive Suite S101, Nebraska 68046, and a manager application for James A. Burrow. This is a public hearing. I'll open it. Um, any proponents? Is the applicant on? Yes, good evening. My name is Sean Kelly, 2804 South 87th Avenue, appearing on behalf of the applicant, here to answer any questions you may have. This is their second early bird location. Their first is in Omaha, been licensed since 2017 uh, with no issues, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much. I have a question. Yes, go ahead. Uh, Mr. Kelly, what is early bird? So early bird, as the name connotates, it is a, a breakfast slash brunch location um really cool menu encourage you to check it out online um they're open from 6 30 to 2 30 every day um so typical breakfast items along with um brunch sandwiches and then they do have a cocktail menu think bloody mary's um mimosas and some crap Any other up, any other proponents? Any opponents? I'll close the public hearing. Do a motion to approve resolution R twenty zero zero seven five. Motion by Jaworski. Motion by Jaworski. <laughs> Second by Klug. Second by Klug. Uh, council discussion. Mr. Sunday, did that answer your question, or do you have anything else? It did. I just didn't know what that what oh. it was. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Here, let me, Thank you. Let me change other that council around discussion. Here. Please vote. Sunday. Aye. Mumgard. Yes. Gaines. Yes. Glover. 
Yes. Jaworski? Yes. Kluk? Yes. Duby? Yes. Engberg? Yes. Eight yeas, zero nays. Motion passes. Thank you. Item F14, resolution R20-0079. A resolution to approve the first amendment to the Pink Industrial Park 2 Phase 2 subdivision agreement. Is there a motion to approve resolution R20-0079? Motion by Stubbe. Motion by Stubbe. Second by Ingberg. Second by Ingberg. Do you have any <laughs> opponents? Any opponents? Council discussion? Please vote. Sunday? Aye. Mumgard? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Glover? Yes. Jaworski? Yes. Luke? Yes. Duby? Yes. Engberg? Yes. Eight yeas, zero nays. Motion passes. Um, item F15, resolution R20080. A resolution to approve addendum two to the agreement between the City of Papillion, Nebraska, and the Papillion Classified Employees Association, PCEA. Is there a motion to approve resolution R20080? Motion by Klug. Motion by Klug. Second by Jaworski. Second by Jaworski. Do we have any proponents? Do we have any opponents? I'm sure Mark would like, any council discussion? Right. He's, a a he's such a pussy. Please vote. Sunday? Aye. Lumbard? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Glover? Yes. Jaworski? Yes. Kluke? Yes. Stubby? Yes. Engberg? Yes. Eight yeas, zero nays. Motion passes. Item F16, resolution R20081, a resolution to approve a final plat for the property legally described as a replatting of lots one and two, Shiwi Farms replat two, and outlot D Shiwi Farms, generally located northwest corner of South 120th Street and Highway 370. The applicant is BHI Investment Company Generations. So motion to approve resolution R20081. Motion by Stubbe. Motion by Stubbe. Second by Ingberg. Second by Ingberg. Do we have any proponents? So what time Friday morning, Jason? Uh, Whoever is talking about Friday morning, please mute your phone. Do we have any other, do we have any proponents? Any opponents? <laughs> Mayor, this is Pat Sullivan. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm just here to answer any questions, and I believe Randy Kushuk from uh, Lampernearson is on as well if there's any questions. Thank you very much. Is there any council discussion? Please vote. Sunday? Aye. Mumgard? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Glover? Yes. Jaworski? Yes. Luke? Yes. Stubbe? Yes. Engberg? Yes. Eight yeas, zero nays. Motion passes. F-17, resolution R-20-0082. It's a related item. A resolution to approve the second amendment to the Shiwi Farm subdivision agreement. So motion to approve resolution R-20-0082. Motion, Engberg. Motion by Engberg. Second by Second by, was that Stubbe? Yes. Uh, any proponents? You know, note that the applicants' representatives are here. Any opponents? Any council discussion? Please vote. Sunday? Aye. Mumgard? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Glover? Yes. Jaworski? Yes. Kluk? Yes. Stubbe? Yes. Engberg? Yes. Eight yeas, zero nays. Motion passes. Item F-18, resolution R-20-0086. A, a resolution to make a VOIA contract change to all city 457B plans to allow for coronavirus-related distributions. Is there a motion to approve resolution R-20-0086? Motion. Motion by Glover. Second, Klug. Second by Klug. Do we have any proponents? Do we have any opponents? Any council discussion? Please vote. Sunday? Aye. Mumgard? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Glover? 
Yes. Jaworski? Yes. Luke? Yes. Stuby? Yes. Engberg? Yes. Eight yeas, zero nays. Motion passes. Uh, it's all the regular agenda items. Next is committee reports, and I don't think any met the last two weeks. Um, any comments from the public? No traction there. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Not seeing any. Uh, any council comments? Just a couple of updates from the last couple of weeks. Everything's related to the COVID. Um, We've continued having daily uh, multi-jurisdictional calls. And again, probably more for education of the public that's on. Um, every weekday morning, we host a call that includes mayors, administrators, police chief, and fire chief from Papillion, La Vista, Bellevue, Springfield, Gretna, and Plattsmouth. Um, it also includes the county attorney, the county commissioner, county administrator, um, the county sheriff, County commissioners, county administrator, county health department. It includes uh, Colonel Dayton from the 55th wing at Bellevue, the mission support group. Uh, Mark Dryling, who is Congressman Bacon's chief of staff from DC. And Dr. Archer, who is Congressman Fortenberry's chief of staff in DC. Um, so we have a daily call, health department gives an update and then we just uh, do any coordination and conversation. So that's still going on every day anticipate that'll be going on for the next couple, three weeks. Um, there, the governor also hosts a weekly call uh, with mayors of all cities across the state. And that is one where there can be open dialogue with the governor and questions asked. So if council does have specific questions that we need to be asking, make sure we're aware of those. And then we also have a weekly one with the White House. Um, sometimes Vice President Pence is on, but it's usually uh, department heads and they're giving updates from a federal level. Um, and that's, uh, we, obviously we can't dialogue on that one, but it's about a 30 minute update directly from the federal government level. So we're getting good updates all week long. Um, statistics from Sarpy County from the health department, and these would have been as of about five o'clock today. There's been about 1,100 people in Sarpy that have been tested. About 5% of those have been positive. That's about 55 positives as of today. 64% uh, of those are recovered. 35 of them are recovered. Um, nine are hospitalized and 20% or 11 are recovering in quarantine at home. Um, and there are no deaths. Um, of the positive, 63% are male and 56% are age 25 to 49. And only 14% are 65 plus. And 63% um, of those are travel or direct contact related, uh, which means in there are 21 that are community spread. Um, the, if you're watching the news at all regarding Nebraska, Hall County, Grand Island is the current hotspot. Um, the main reason for that is because they got a lot of manufacturing facilities in that area. So a lot of close contact, um, people have to be at work and they're shoulder to shoulder. Um, the health department in Sarpy is looking for those types of places and educating. Um, but so far we don't see those, but if they, if that does get infected, that could be a quick spread. But with that in mind of that close contact shoulder to shoulder, uh, we've actually looked at that within city operations and we do have a formal policy that if people cannot be more than six feet away, um, then they do have to have masks. Um, primary spot is in the police and fire when they're in the, in the building itself working or in public works, if two people must be in a truck, um, you will see them mask under that policy. And so staff is doing a great job taking that serious. Um, right now, the model for the peak in Nebraska is from April 22nd to May 11th. That's a 19 day period where at the peak, it just kind of stays flat. The good news is it's not peaking at the level that originally it was. I think originally it was calling for 18 deaths on the peak day and peak would have only been two to three days. Now it's only three deaths on the peak day, but the peak now lasts 19 days. So again, flattening the curve actually elongates it a little bit. Um, and then June 6th is about when it predicts returning to normal, normal being no deaths predicted that day. Um, that's the current model that the state is using. Um, because of that, it's starting to put in question um, a lot of things related to community events, opening swimming pools, 
um, summer programs. And that's a lot of the conversation that occurs in the multi-jurisdictional call. So we can kind of learn from each other and what everybody's thinking. La Vista has canceled La Vista Days. Uh, that was the first community event. And so they will not be holding that. Um, the big discussion around the state right now is around swimming pools. Um, because of the governor's directive health orders, it would probably be mid-June uh, mid before a pool could open. Um, where that raises the big question then for Papillion is do we open the pool at all because we should be hiring lifeguards now. Uh, they should be going through training. And if we don't know the opening date, it's probably, it's not responsible probably to start hiring people. And so once we do know a date, we'd be in a crunch to hire and get lifeguards uh, going. And then there are indications the governor is still gonna keep some of the directive health measures in place to limit groups, uh, which then keeps uh, the number of people in the pool down. And so if we do open, um, there's no question that the revenue of the pool probably would not cover the operations and our general philosophy is not to use property tax to subsidize that. Um, so we'll be facing some philosophical questions um, probably in the next couple of weeks of do we open Papio Bay or not. And obviously that's an important thing to the uh, community. So council will be involved in that discussion. The next big thing for Papillion then is probably Papillion days. Um, and do we have Papillion days or not? And those are very active conversations going. Um, probably about, about May 1st, a hard decision needs to be made because of all the logistics involved in Papillion Days. Um, and there's also talk going on, if for any reason we can't hold Papillion Days, then can we find an alternate date, do it a little bit later? Um, and some of that planning is going on to find, is the carnival available at a later date and those types of things. So stay tuned. Um, and probably by May 1st, there'll be a lot of discussion in those arenas. Um, the other thing unrelated to COVID, well, sort of related, um, we, um, every year we ask Moody's to rate us from a credit perspective. We, if you remember, we started that about eight years ago and we have always held an investment grade rating and we've actually had our rating increased one, uh, once and whatever level we've been at, we've held that level. If it's at a higher one, um, we scheduled a Moody's call prior to the COVID hitting. And then once the global pandemic and the national state of emergency was declared, Moody says it's time for the call. Um, so probably the worst time in US history to have a call with Moody's to evaluate your finances. Um, the great news, thanks to uh, Nancy and Chris, um, Moody's reiterated our investment grade rating of an AA1. They held us at that level and COVID was a very big piece of the conversation. So I'll just share anecdotally that um, the policies that we've been putting in place the last five years, the cash reserve policies, and a lot of those policies were a direct, a direct conversation. And it was about four to five years ago, we were saying uh, things are going really well, but at some point um, it's not gonna go well. And it's not a matter of when, um, it's just uh, when it, it's not a matter of if, it's when it's going. And I think at that point in time, we we're anticipating there's gonna be a recession at some point in time, which is why we're putting it in. I don't think anybody anticipated a global pandemic, um, but the wisdom of the policies are showing. So um, staff is doing a great job and there's a lot of assumptions being made going into budget planning. And uh, we won't know our impact on sales tax revenue until probably May to June. Um, our sales tax receipts are two months after the sale is made. So March sales are May receipts. Um, April sales are June receipts. So we will know the impact in the next couple of months and then we can plan appropriately. But I just wanna publicly thank Nancy and Chris for all of their work related to our finances over the last five, six, seven, eight years. Uh, the department heads who have uh, done a great job, um, staff, the unions who have negotiated reasonable agreements with us, um, and especially the council in uh, supporting great policies that are now paying off. Um, I think we're in a rare situation of not having to panic. Um, there are a lot of communities that are really scared right now. And the thing we've talked about is when a recession or something hit, how do we just keep doing what we're doing and slide through it? And so thank you very much uh, for everything you did there. Any other council discussion? 
If not, a reminder, May 22nd, we're gonna have another blood drive at the Red, with the Red Cross at the Field House. Um, and just uh, another public thank you for Kendra for pulling the Zoom together and driving. And I think it went fairly smooth for our second attempt at electronic meeting. So with that, is there a motion to adjourn? Motion by Glover. Motion by Glover. Second, Second by, by Klug. Second by Klug. Please vote. Sunday. Aye. Mumgard? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Glover? Yes. Jaworski? Yes. Luke? Yes. Stuby? Yes. Engberg? Yes. Eight nays, zero nays. We are adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>